I'm showing you a video. In Ghana, you will see a church here and a mosque here at the same premises. That is Ghana. Yeah. Ghana and Kwan, I'll go with a sort of dying any and Kramodai a bog a bush. Bakuba and Bakuan, to Quebiensi, and Panyampa, Yakopo and Shiragana. Piao. Hello, welcome to my channel once again. Welcome, welcome. Today, I am bringing you something special. Um, something that I think uh, it has been bothering a lot of people. It has been, it has been bothering a lot of people. Uh, some people will be like, um, why is Ghana the second most peaceful country in Africa? If you're someone who has traveled to Ghana before, you can attest to the fact that the country is very peaceful. No doubt, no cap. You understand today i'm here to give you some points some things that will let you know that truly 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 ghana is one of the peaceful countries in africa and ghana is not just being ranked the second most peaceful country in africa but ghana deserves it you understand so you know every country there are three major things that actually brings conflict wars like civil wars and everything all these bad stuff in every country number one is politics and the number two is tribalism the third one is religion so today i am going to take these things one by one let's start with politics our politicians in ghana let me tell you these guys they are friends they are course mates they, they've known each other for a very long time so it will be very difficult for something to even happen in Ghana that can escalate to the point that no one can't control it. You understand? These people are friends. They are friends. They are actually two siblings from the same mother from, and from the same father. These two people, Abu Jinapo and John Jinapo, one is in the NDC, that's uh, one of the major political parties in Ghana, and one is in the NDC. My question to you is, how can these two guys fight? Someone will say, yes, it seems like the family or these guys are smart because they know that Ghanaians, if they don't vote for NDC, they are going to vote for MPP. So the family is just going to enjoy for a very long time. Let me go into this. Um, you remember in 2017, uh, when President Akufuado became president, he called all the former heads of state that we had at the time. That's President Rawlings, President John Ajikun Kufu, and the immediate one that left office before he came into power, John Dramani Mahama. He called all these people together and they had a meeting, a very long meeting, for close to two hours. Let me ask, how many countries can this happen? Just, just tell me, how many countries can this happen? It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. John Ejekum Kufo was also met on arrival by the Chief of Staff, Prima Osai Opari, and Deputy Chief of Staff, Abu Jinapo, and then received by President Ekufu Ado at his office. He was followed by former President John Dramani Mahama, who was also met on arrival by the Chief of Staff, Prima Osai Opari, Deputy Chief of Staff, Abu Jinapo, and Director of State Protocol, Ambassador Hassan Ahmad, and then received by President Ekufu Ado at his office. The meeting, which lasted for two hours, was held in good atmosphere, one of frank exchanges and mutual respect. And there is also these two strong political parties that we have in Ghana. We had one from the opposition party and one from the incumbent party that also went on television and they were just playing game. And how that game was so fun to even watch. It was like so beautiful. These are some of the things that sometimes when you hear in Ghana. <laughs> Play! 
the second most peaceful country in Africa shouldn't be something that you will be doubting you know it shouldn't be something that you'll be doubting because it's something that like when you come into the country as a foreigner you receive the love you see everything it's so glaring to the eye it's not something that is hidden and my next point is going to be the religious differences that we have in Ghana listen Ghana is one of the countries someone will say I'm a Christian another person will say I'm a Muslim see when you come to Ghana, it is very difficult for you to even notice or see whether this person is a Muslim or this person is a Christian. We are all one. Muslims in Ghana are not at just one particular place. They are everywhere in Ghana. Like you can find Muslims in villages. You know, we have um, a community, a Muslim community called Zongo in Ghana. And I'm telling you, you will find zongos everywhere every corner when it comes to the capital of accra when you hear medina when you hear newtown when you hear nima you hear mamobi you hear fadama all these places are muslim communities but hardly will you even notice unless perhaps you hear them speak the language or you see them wearing their attire that's when you are going to see that yeah this person is a muslim that is Ghana for you. And I think one thing that um, Kwame Nkrumah actually did, our first president did for Ghanaians is that he made sure that unity started from our schools. Because when you go to public schools, Muslims are there, Christians are there. If a Muslim wants to go and pray, they can go and pray. If the Christian wants to pray, anything that you want to do, you can easily do it. So I think it, it actually stemmed from that time to date and trust me it's very difficult for you to know whether this person is a christian or this person is a muslim few few years back i think around 2019 a pastor in ghana prophesied that the muslim chief imam the senior most chief imam that's the national chief imam will die this is what the pastor prophesied and you know, these things have been going on in Ghana. People, uh, pastors prophesying people will die, people will die, people will die. So when this thing happened, the Muslim youth went to this pastor's church to vandalize the place and just destroyed some of their stuffs in the church. But immediately the chief imam called these people that they should stop. Nobody should go to the church to destroy anything again. The Muslim youth, everybody just stopped. None of them went back to the church to do anything again. And one beautiful thing is that the pastor who prophesied at that time also realized what he did wasn't right. And also he wanted to also appreciate the chief imam for stopping the youth to go ahead and destroy more staffs at his church by going there to donate a cow to appreciate his intervention that he gave and it was actually a beautiful moment it was actually a beautiful Hand, moment sheikh dr osmanu nuhu sharabutu and reverend awusu bempa walked in the demeanor of both religious leaders communicated nothing but peace and love the reverend presented a cow to show appreciation to the chief imam he said, but for his swift intervention, issues would have been worse. 
And this is another thing. I'm giving you another point. The next year, the chief imam was celebrating his 100th birthday. The chief imam, the Muslim chief imam, he was celebrating his 100th birthday. And this Muslim chief imam went straight to the church to celebrate his 100th birthday with the church. This is the country I'm from, Ghana. And you know, one thing in Ghana is that every Ghanaian will tell you when it is time for Salah, we, we normally call it Salah, or let me say Idil Fetal. You will see Christians celebrating Idil Fetal with the Muslims. And whenever it is Christmas or Easter, you will see Muslims celebrating the same thing the same Christmas and Easter with the Christians. This is Ghana. Yes, I don't know the criteria that they use in selecting a country to become the most peaceful country in the world. Yes, but I think Ghana should be number one as at now. Yes. Now, let me go to the tribal differences. The tribal differences. Listen, Ghana is one country that I know we have intermarried ourselves to the extent that I can boldly say that about 70 to 80% of Ghanaians have intermarried themselves from different tribes. I'm telling you, from different tribes. Ghanaians have intermarried themselves. You know, when you pick about 10 Ghanaians right now. I will not be surprised seven or eight out of the 10 will tell you my mother is an Ashanti, my dad is an Ewe, my father is a Fanti, my mother is a Ga, my mother is Rusi, and my dad is Ono. You know, it's, it's like that. We have intermarried ourselves to the extent that it's very difficult. And a country like that, if you even decide that you are going to fight one tribe, the question is, most of these people have intermarried themselves, so how? How can you even fight your brother? You understand? Because you would definitely meet a lot of Ghanaians who are half this, half that, half this, half that. That is the country, Ghana, for you. Let me give you a, typ a typical example. Our former president, John Jerry Rollins, may his soul rest in perfect peace. He is an Ewe, and he married from the Ashanti tribe. President Nanado is from the Achim tribe or the Chebi, that's where he's from. I think they are Achim people. And he married from the Ga tribe. Our former president John Dramani Mahama is from the northern, that's Bole Bamboy, but he married from the Bono tribe. That's this, like, that is Ghana. Let me tell you, that is Ghana. These are even public figures and all of them. Our former president Kufuor, the same thing as Anashanti, and all he also married from the Bono tribe. That is Ghana. And in Ghana, we consider the marriage of John Jerry Rawlings and the fair, the former first lady Kunedu Ajiman Rawlings as one of the best marriages that we've ever witnessed in Ghana. So next time if you hear that Ghana is peaceful, know that there are a lot of things that actually contribute to that.
thank you so much for watching i thank you so so much for watching